what up, folks? This is the Elijah Bailey Show, and we will be starting shortly, so make sure to uh, prepare yourself, get ready to dive into our comics episode, because today is going to be fun, starting in just a bit. Sorry, the fingers are not matching what I'm saying. If you guys are watching here live on twitch.tv forward slash Elijah underscore 5000. As you can see, thank you, the bucket. He saw the hair. It's not exactly on point just yet. But as you can see, the man, the myth, the boy Mikey in the corner. We were trying to do that Tokyo Avengers look. I had it up too high, wrapped up into, into a knot for too long. So I got to let it relax just a bit. Because Mikey, he's always relaxed, even when he's whooping ass. But we're here today for our 288th episode so thank you guys for joining me and just wait just a minute and groove to the music you saw me um really the 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 character model for the hulk was based after me so that was early concept work that you saw right there then we gave it to mark ruffalo so i mean by he's doing a great job and thank you he says saw the locks i know he did because last night we had an easy night at work uh and we, we were preparing. We were, there was a lot of anime combo going on, but we're not going to harp and stay on the anime shit today. Today is comic. So if you're new to the show, uh, there are several things that you need to know. Each episode is just a little bit different. At the beginning of every month, we start with our comic book episode. Where we cover all the latest comics, things that are in movies, uh, television, things that you want to see, things that you want to read. Second week is anime, where we cover any fucking thing anime manga the latest movies and buck usually joins in on that one and we go wild and crazy third week is video games as you can hear the mario theme in the background and if you were with us yesterday 7 30 a.m twitch fucked up after like an hour and a half into the stream but it was me jay stone in the bucket i'm gonna let you let me i'm gonna let you uh see what we was doing yesterday this was um it was Street Fighters. Give up or, or try again. And in the back, that man that's looking down with the nose pointed up in the air, that's the buckety right there. Um, but yeah, we had some some nice video game play uh, yesterday. Um, but on the third week of the month, that's where I dive in and cover everything that happens in video games. The latest systems, we went over the PS5 restocks that were coming out and a whole bunch of other shit, new games, recommendations. And then we have our Bailey Bugle. Uh, what'd you say? Uh, and if you guys want to ch chime in during the show, if you guys want to chat, which I encourage and I love because you guys can see chat on the screen, whether I'm streaming or whether it's a podcast. But right now we have Monsieur Tapelin, the uh, Senior Dos of the show, Mr. Buckety. He says, and J.S. Stone got the win, but it was close. That was that's true. It was like a, a three way tie, five, five, five for a while. Then Buck and Stone pulled, started pulling forward. I stayed at five. I feel like those five were, were very well earned. I got over like this traumatic fear of Street Fighter that I have. Like at the arcade, I, I got my ass whooped. And then so it's always looked like a different game. Like most people are playing. They're like, oh, man, Ryu, Ken. And I'm like, is that Cleopatra and Ra? And then fucking Skeletor and He-Man on screen. I don't know how to control these people. I don't know what I'm doing. But it was a great, uh, great couple of matches. I think it got to eight, eight, seven, seven, and then Stone pulled ahead. As you know, he pulled out his special custom costumes on motherfucker. So he won again. Uh, and because this is the first time that we played Street Fighter in the last three months gaming, I think we're going to go back to it again next Saturday. Uh, I got the first and second season pass for characters, um, and I'm. I'm 
I am down to put in the effort like I did in Dragon Ball Fighters for Street Fighter. So I digress. Join us 7.30 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time here on the Elijah Bailey Show channel. So that way that you guys that are watching the podcast, you know that the show happens here, a little bit of anime happens here, and my streaming happens here. Or you can go to Jstone812, who right after our stream, he heads into his normal Saturday streams. And Monsieur Buckety is jumping back on to streaming. So make sure to jump in and join then. We're going to turn these. Uh, vibes down just a little bit more and let's go into it now I said there was a couple things I gave you the segments for the show uh, as far as the weekly segments each episode we have three main segments we always do the the recommendations and the releases then I give you the Taiyose the black character that we honor from either anime comics or video game and then we take a break segment two is going to be the meat of the show where we cover the news and whatever fucking else is on the table you know when Dragon Ball Super drops me and Buck go hard into that as well as Black Clover and uh, Jujutsu Kaisen now which gotta catch up on Buck and then the third segment is the anime and manga of the month and that's how we round out the show so let's not waste any time now today is going to be a little bit different because i was having trouble getting um all of my comics pictures here and then it appears that uh well we'll get to that in a minute i want to start with marvel comics for our comics releases now the way that we normally do this there are two comics for marvel and dc comics one comic that i recommend for image and one for dark horse so we're going to start off um with this one now what did i name this now i uploaded these pictures but there's so many gifts so many photos so many things that are in my stream labs right now i'm having to go back and do this old school so these pictures are going to pop up and i'm going to resize them but the first one from marvel comics which i really was uh, impressed with because it follows young t'challa and storm is black panther legends issue two of four this is written by toche uh onyebuchi and then also the art and cover is by setor fadiz fadizigbe now i'm sorry if i'm fucking up your names the pronunciation is not uh of my normal tongue but uh, as we go over this comic, and then with these these four issues, I do want to reach out to the writer and the, author and the artist because it seems like we're getting some backstory that we've much needed. So we're following young T'Challa as he continues on his journey and he meets the legendary Storm. Three years after the death of his father, T'Challa continues his preparation to one day ascend to the throne after being rescued from the poachers uh, by a girl named Aurora who can control storms he say he stays with her for a little while meeting the other family she's been helping and learning that he and wakanda could be doing better by their neighbors but threats back home are building and they will not be so easily dealt with dive into the legend of the black panther in this new origin story by acclaimed author toche and new york's time best-selling illustrator sitar uh this is a 32 page banger rated t three dollars and 99 cents drops Boom, this month in November. If you guys never got into the story or saw Storm and uh, T'Challa dating and their conversation, they very much uplift each other. They're very much partners, but you do get to see the dichotomy of being the king of Wakanda and being a, a goddess, really. So, um, man, that cover is fire. But I know you're going to like this one, Buck. Let me go. Uh, this one is called uh, Crimson uh rain now where oh pfft, crimson duh it's gonna be up at the top boom uh yes this is star wars star wars crimson rain now uh i think i told you about this at work and the reason we're, we're interested in this because this follows right and jumps off the backs of the war of the bounty hunter so this is written by charles soul and then steve cummings is an artist um this is issue number one of five after the dawn comes the rain the story that began with the War of the Bounty Hunters continues here in the second installment of a trilogy that will reshape the history of the Star Wars galaxy during the Age of the Rebellion, featuring the return of the beloved character, shocking twists, and epic feats of the Force, and a story that will reach from Star Wars' darkest underworld all the way to the Imperial Palace of Coruscant. Uh, Crimson Rain is a Star Wars saga like no other. 40-page banger, rated T, $4.99. Now, again, there are many more comics in Marvel's library, but I'm only giving you two from Marvel, and then I'm going to hop on over to good old DC. Now, DC hasn't disappointed, um, and I know DC is getting Batman heavy, but I really love the cover art for this, and I like 
like the story. I, any story that's involving poison ivy and the way that she manipulates plants, I think is a is. I'm not going to say a great story, but I think is interesting because she doesn't see herself as a murderer. She is trying to, she sees herself as an environmentalist trying to save the world. Um, what up, Saul? I said, I've seen some of the Star Wars comics. They look awesome. The cover art on those comics are, they just blow me away because it's very fucking consistent. And then the Vader run of shit, Vader runs through shit like Madara. So, and I'm a very excited to see the Ahsoka show because we know we're getting um, Anakin, in well we're gonna get post vader because remember vader was redeemed on his death so now i feel like this series with ahsoka he's coming back as that force ghost like yoda and obi-wan so that'd be cool if if they don't do it and we get some actual live action backstory and past that'll be fucking dope as well and we know he's going to be in the kenobi show so let's watch out for that but let's keep things pushing and move over to dc comics batman secret files the gardener issue number one story by james tyon the fourth and art by christian ward um cal by james tyon the fourth this is four dollars and 99 cents 40 page banger there is a variant copy that costs five dollars and 99 cents this goes on sale november 16th this year she is shrouded in thriller her motives a secret and one can assist however ask who's bella garden aka the gardener actually inexperienced uh inexperienced thumb storier uh, James Ty on the fourth and Christian Ward dig deep into her previous and unearth the key origin of the newest addition to the Batman's Rogues Gallery. Be taught not solely how Bella Garten got her uh, got here to know Pamela Isley, aka Poison Ivy. However, how she was integral to the origin of the lady who sooner became recognized as poison ivy so how did poison ivy become poison ivy that's the story we're getting if you look at this this cover right here and there's two covers there's another one that looks real fucking i should have put that one up it, it's interesting but this i like the way the colors blend we see batman in the background as that shrouded figure but this is going to give us that reason why poison ivy is poison ivy and uh, I think they did pretty well in Gotham hidden on that. But this this series right here, this story right here, this is going to dive into it. I'm excited to see it. Um, let's move on to the next one. This one was uh, one that if you didn't read the the origin, because it <sighs> basically black people wanted somewhere else to go because white people was fucking on, on land. They wanted to go to Atlantis. Then it led to this big war between essentially black man and aquaman and now we have the story that we have here where this is going to be a retelling and dive in deeper to black manta's story now is black manta going to be a hero is he going to be a villain i don't know um no where's the black mana cover that shit was nice it was meta as fuck i say meta as fuck it's just nice as fuck here it is right here um and it looks like black man is about to get decapitated but what is the reason why he, he's a villain we know that other villains don't like him uh, but what is his motivation? What is his purpose? And today we will find out. Written by Chuck Brown, art by Matthew Dow, Sa uh, Dow Smith. Uh, $3.99, 32 page banger, three of six. And there is a variant cover, $4.99. This drops November 9th. Uh, Black Manta and the mysterious Torrid violently collide when the reality of Manta's hyperlink to Atlantis is revealed. Torrid and Manta's fate violently collide, and Manta. Oh, shit, I accidentally copied that again. Forget that second part. Gallus uncovers uh, Manta's act of heroism. However, will Manta proceed on this path? Or will he flip away from good to show Gallus that ice water in your veins is important for survival? So this goes back to how Black Manta has had to survive uh, through the last you know, a couple of years and where he is now, there is an act of hero heroism that goes down. Um, and remember, this is issue three. So there's two issues before. I don't want to ruin those for you. Jump on those two issues and prepare for the ninth and get this third one because Black Mana's shit is going down. And I can't wait to see him and Aquaman 2. And we had um, some words uh, and some, some whispers that Black Mana was supposed to have a spinoff, which was actually a series on HBO Max. So I'm hoping that we get one like we did with Peacemaker. But I don't know. I just want to see more fucking black mana um and that wraps up all the comics for 
DC Comics, let's go ahead and move to this one. Image Comics has done a great job with always going their own path. And I feel like today, um, there was a tweet that went out to James Gunn talking about following your dreams and, you know, creating something. And he said, it does the most important thing is to finish. And then somebody followed up with like, what happens if it sucks? He said, it doesn't matter. Finish your work. And Image and Dark Horse Comics continue to have comics that don't only just come from Robert Kirkman and uh, um, Scott Snyder and all those people. They come from multiple artists and they are pushing the boundaries. This is issue number one of what's the furthest place from here. This drops November 10th. This is rated T+. Um, the world has ended. All that remains are gangs of children living amongst the ruins. But Sid believes there must be something more out there. When she disappears into the wasteland, her gang will risk everything to bring her home. A story about things that matter most. Your survival, your loved ones, and your record collection. Written by Matthew Rosenberg and art by Tyler Boss. Uh, I didn't get how much this one's dropping for, but look out for it from Image Comics on November the 10th. And sadly, that ends the uh, recommendations for this month. Dark Horse, I don't see anything coming out from Dark Horse until December. And there is one that I will tell you now, Apache Delivery Service is like this horror, uh, gory adventure. Issue number one drops in January, so I'm excited. I'm waiting for January to come. But Dark Horse has some shit coming in December as well. And you'll just have to wait to the beginning of the next month to figure out what that is. Let's go ahead and dive into Taiyose, which in Japanese means diversity because we are talking about a black character in comics that we need to uh, pay some homage to. Now, if you don't know, Milestone Comics was... I want to say big back in the day because they were dealing with diverse characters uh, went away. DC has come back and brought them into the fold. So now we are going to talk about not static, even though I'm reading the comics. There's six issues out. The fourth one is on sale on Amazon because I tried to try to go ahead and buy it. And I think I have to wait one more week before it comes out. I have to check and I'll get I'll try to get it back to you before the end of the show if I remember. But uh, besides static, you have this man right here, Hardwire. So. I'm going to put the, I'm sorry, Mikey, I got to cover you up. I got to put the comic on one side and then give you, give you guys a chest shot on the other. But Hardwire is our character that we are going to pay some respect to. Mr. Curtis Metcalf. Um, again, like I said, he's with DC Comics, came from Milestone Comics. He first appeared in Hardware issue number one, February 1993, and was created by Dwayne McDuffie and Dennis Cowan. Hardwire was the first of Milestone's ties to be published, along with Blood Syndicate, Icon, and Static. That's why I threw that motherfucker's name in there. And if you follow me on Twitter or Instagram, you're getting the latest um, uh, inkings of Static because the artist that is just fucking killing the work keeps posting. And right now, Static's got some like burn marks on his face and shit. And he's got like a cat. He's got the Deadpool Batman cow giving us that nasty eye as the locks are flowing back. And he's just going through the city ready to beat somebody's ass. I'm, I'm loving Static. But... Let's continue with Hardwire. Curtis Kurt Metcalf is a genius inventor who, in the hard, uh, who is Hardwire's identity, uses a variety of high-tech gadgets to fight organized crime. A central irony of the series, of which Metcalf is full aware, is that Metcalf's employer, respected businessman Edwin Alva, who provides the resources Metcalf uses to create Hardwire's Hardwire, hardware uh, is secretly the crime boss whom hardwire is trying to bring down so again this cat and mouse we've seen it in comics multiple times but it's hardwire so make sure to check out hardwire and hardwire is i think maybe five six issues in right now uh with milestones relaunch of these characters as well as icon and rocket so make sure to check that shit out uh milestone comics brought the pain with these fucking comics and right now they're just doing even better work with revamping them um, but that's going to wrap up our character for this episode. And we're already 20 minutes in, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and bump up the Mario music for a minute. Let's take a pause for the cause, and we'll be right back with episode 288 of The Elijah Bailey Show as I bring you the fucking news and what's hot in comics today. We'll be right back after this break.
I can't stay away too long. Even though I like that Mario music, that's that nice laid back thinking music. Like, do, 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 do. I, I, that's, sometimes you look at the people you work with and you have that shit playing in your head. But let's go ahead and dive back into uh, the show. I, I, I say dive back in too much, but with all the shit that's coming from comics, I've had to remove stuff from this list. There's a lot of fucking shit coming now. As you saw at the top of the show, you saw me looking like the Hulk and the nice, you know, the green tint on. I ate my my uh, my spinach, you know, putting that Popeye shit on, muscles popping out. But we talked last episode about how there could be a live action Hulk coming to uh, the MCU. This comes from Comic Book News just a few days after uh, that. Thanks to the work as uh, thanks to his work as Bruce Banner, the Hulk in the MCU, Mark Ruffalo definitely has a number of dedicated fans, which has continued to have fans flooding anybody they can with the fact that we want a Hulk film. Um, in Begin Again, a chance encounter between a down and out mu- uh, music business executive and a young songwriter uh, from uh, yeah songwriter new to Manhattan turns into a promising collaboration between two talents. Uh, the film also stars MCU star Haley Steinfeld, as well as James Corden and Katherine Keener. Why is this important? Because this film, along with other talks, led to um, Mark Ruffalo uh, coming up with an idea, along with several others, as to why, um, you know, the Hulk might not go to Disney Plus, maybe Netflix. Netflix is trying to dig into its pocket to create this uh, Hulk show. Even though we have She-Hulk coming to Disney+, Plus, it might be a nice move to have him on Netflix and have Disney go ahead and just take over the uh, TV series, the the TV adaptation of the Hulk. Because the convolutedness with the Hulk's rights, um, you know, we had the Ed Norton Hulk that kind of got Hulk in the universe, but then they switched and got Mark Ruffalo. That all has to do with where the characters are tied up in money, how to renew and institute these characters to stay either with Sony, Fox, Marvel, whoever it may be. But we're getting closer along with the contracts and the the dealings and, and the signings for new characters coming into the MCU. The partnerships between Sony, how fruitful it's been with Spider-Man, as well as some of these other companies. So, it deems to say that whether it's on Netflix or Disney Plus, this Hulk movie, which could be World War Hulk, is coming soon. Do I want it to be a movie? Yes. Can it be a series? Yes. Why? Because we got Thor Ragnarok. So we kind of got the best of both worlds because we didn't think we were going to get it. I'm just excited to the fact that somebody is opening their ear and their mind to the possibility that we could see Mark Ruffalo's Hulk in World War Hulk. Uh, as a featured film or a series that looks like a fucking feature film. That's all I'm saying. I'm excited about it. Hopefully you guys are. I like the Hulk and the Hulk got punked out by by Thanos. So, you know, we got to get him. We got to get him back in here. He has to put his hands back on somebody. He's got to start acting like the Hulk. But let's move from a heavy hitter like the Hulk to the next heavy hitter, which is a martial artist. Now, I know a lot of people had comments on this. Uh, Me and Jay Stone did when we did the Superpower Movie Podcast and we covered uh, TV series, Netflix series, as well as the films. But let me go ahead and pull you to pull this up because there were several tweets that came out this week. I mean, these are literally a day apart. Um, And I don't want to give you uh the the tweet from the 29th i want the one from the 28th where is it there we go iron fist in a classic iconic spider-man look no more uh he quits why is that let's go ahead and see marvel comics has announced that danny Rand is seemingly hanging up his tights and calling it quits as the immortal iron fist a new tease from the publisher was released early uh online earlier today and this was on the 28th uh simply read iron fist no more february 2022 featuring a piece of art that pays direct homage to when Spider-Man, Peter Parker, Spider-Man No More, gave up his fucking suit. Further details about the storyline, such as the writer and the artist team, will be that will bring this to life were not yet disclosed. But as we approach the full uh, February 2022 uh, solicitations, we're getting more and more info. Now, I'm going to stop right there. The rest of this um, article is irrelevant because, like I said, this came a day apart after Iron Fist quit. They also tweeted out this bit of news that that gave us a little. I mean, we scratched our head, but then I feel like a lot of people were scratching like, 
enjoy, we get a new Iron Fist. Who is the new Iron Fist? The Dragon Awakens, February 2022. Let's go ahead and open this article up to see if we get any hints to who our new Iron Fist is. Marvel said the Iron Fist would be no more on the 28th, and now they're teasing another character taking up the mantle. The identity of Danny, uh, the image of Danny Rand walking away uh, from the costume in the trash can uh, all over social media was crazy. People were going crazy. They didn't know what to do. A lot of people had their guesses, but nothing in certain uh, as to if Danny Rand would take up the mantle Again, the MCU fans are also getting on on speculation because there are a lot of new characters coming. We're getting the the um, Young Avengers. We're getting all these new teams in these next phases. So are the comics alluding to that? It says Iron Fist's latest adventure in Heart of the Dragon have been setting this up for a second now. Now, I haven't been keeping up with Iron Fist for a while. I haven't been I've been hardcore in manga. No shit. So this was interesting. Larry Hama and David uh, Watchner uh, saw Danny lose the Iron Fist. Akoye of the Dora Milaje inherited the power and was trying to give it back, but the hero wouldn't accept the transfer. Instead, she had the Iron Fist revert to an egg form. The dragon, Gork the Undying, sits waiting for a new host as Danny Rand will try to navigate life without powers, much like Spider-Man did when he made the similar decision. However, everything will not just stay in stasis until he takes the mantle back up. Careful uh, readers saw that there is some sort of a demonic hand inching towards the discarded costume in the alleyway. If that weren't enough danger for the former Iron Fist, there was also some manner of demon looking on from a window across the street. So things will be uh, anything but quiet for Ren as he tries to sort out his life. This seems intriguing, but I'm, I, the question I think everybody's asking is like, will our new Iron Fist be Asian? Will he be of any kind of Asian descent or will this be, you know, uh, somebody of non-Asian descent coming up and picking up the mantle? I feel like if we can tell new stories from another cultural perspective, that'll be amazing. Now, the Okoye stuff sounds dope as fuck and her being from Wakanda and being this trained warrior and the Dora Milaje being... Uh, crafted after the the Dahomey Amazons or the Amazons of legend, it stands to 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 think that there's something that was passed on when she had that power before she you know encapsulated it back into the head and gave it back to the undying. Now this next Iron Fist, they're gonna have to come through their own. You know you know how Danny went back and found other previous Iron Fists and figured out more ways to use his power and got more proficient. I feel like we're going to get that, but from a different cultural perspective. And uh, I'm down for that shit. So this one hit me out of nowhere because I thought this was the old Tim Burton Batman type shit when they were talking about Danny DeVito. And it's uh, Danny DeVito uh, reveals first look at his Batman uh, comic featuring Penguin. I was like, oh, maybe Danny DeVito's like, oh, they put, you know, me, my version of the penguin back into the comic books that's awesome but no danny devito is actually writing on this comic now this is what he posted from his twitter um his twitter account and i just didn't feel like danny devito was on twitter like that he's he's an older guy but danny devito right here you guys can go ahead and read the tweet sorry to cover up chat um, and remember, if you guys want to chat, join twitch.tv forward slash Elijah underscore 5000. Or you guys can go to Facebook and go to the Elijah Bailey Show Facebook page or Edge B Gaming, Edge Gaming page, and watch the show live there on Sunday, 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you're not watching and you're listening now, um, you can go to PodCoin. And for every minute that you listen, you get some kind of credit back. You can redeem those for rewards, cards, free coffee, whatever. But let's continue with this because, I, again, like I said, I thought this was from the old film. It says DC Comics has released a preview of Gotham City Villains Anniversary Giant issue number one, showing off a tease of the Danny DeVito pen story, Bird Cat Love. Having starred as Oswald, Co Oswald Cobblepot in the 1992 Batman Returns, DeVito brings his mark to the Penguin in the pages of DC comic for the first time. Writing the story featuring artwork by fan favorite detective comics art Dan Mora, uh, DeVito and DC have revealed a first look. Now, what you're seeing is that first look of the comic and how Penguin looks, but I thought it was so 
So DeVito, uh, thank you, uh, you know, Dan Mora for the sneak peek of the Penguin uh, story I'm writing for DC Comics Gotham City Villains Anniversary Anthology. Um, the Penguin, if you don't know, is almost just the exact counterpart to Batman and uh, in the way that we have money, but the way that we look at the world, the way that we interact with people are completely different because that that Takeru Mui Mui that I'm so so much of myself and that's what make penguin he, he stays in the dark he does his dealing he comes out he, he rumbles if he has because he's not a fighter but he could rumble if he has to but he's in those shadows and i love the penguin from all the arkham series and the way they portrayed him in those stories so uh Vadita, danny devito was over the top and like, ah, when i get your kitty and he was he was horny but i feel like with this comic he's toned it down now this will be on sale uh, uh november 30th this is there's a ten dollar variant there is a nine dollar uh copy of this actually i think it is 9.99 so you get the regular 96 page issue prestige nine dollars 99 or you can get the ten dollar and 99 us variant card stock cover and again, there's many writers in this, but Penguin, DeVito. Uh, and then it reads as Gotham City may be protected by the Dark Knight, but his major metropolitan uh, destination is also plagued by some of the deadliest, most nefarious villains in DC universe. In this oversized anniversary, giant DC comic proudly presents tales of Batman's deadliest foes written and drawn by some of the biggest, most exciting names in comics. 2021 marks an anniversary year for the Scarecrow, Poison Ivy, Ra's al Ghul, Talia al Ghul, the Mad Hatter, Killer Moth, and the original Red Hood and Gotham City villains anniversary giant number one brings back those baddies to life in big bad ways. Also featuring the anniversary celebrating of the Penguin written by none other than the man who brought Oswald Cobblepot to life in batman returns star of the silver screen danny devito um let me see if i can uh i can't pull it up go go to this is on comicbook.com anywhere that you can find this and it's it's good to be bad you have all these fucking it's, everybody's in this uh giant anniversary and the artwork just looks so fucking amazing poison ivy's hair looks Dude, I want to hang on. You know what? Fuck this. I'm about to show you guys real quick. I was like, oh, I want to show you guys so much. Let's go ahead and just turn this shit around. I say turn it around. Yeah, this will work. Boom. Right there. Now, as we look at it, you get Rache in the back. Poison Ivy's hair is looking, you know, it. Can I zoom in? I want to zoom in a little bit more. This is what I'm going to do. It's gonna make it just a little bit bigger because if you can look at her hair there's it's leaves you know coming down the side of her face even her eyebrows are some kind of grass and then you know her suit and shit but it's just the art is just so fucking phenomenal and to see the agul standing one above the other scarecrow the red hood in the back the penguin's face is all fucking old fucked up and shit and then you have the mad hat with his big chiclet ass teeth and his red eye I'm, I'm excited this is that's some cool shit to actually pay some homage. I was actually gonna write a book about uh, the psychosis of our favorite heroes from Skeletor to the Joker to fucking uh, Cobra Commander, all that shit. What's up, so a Killer Moth, a character? I mean, uh, Brendan Fraser is coming to play Killer Moth in the Batgirl, which we're gonna talk about here in a minute. So I feel like if you write them correctly, it'll be, it'll be interesting. Cause I know that Gotham, uh, the live action, Killer Moth was one of Catwoman and Ivy's friends as a kid, and she basically was getting beat on by her family, made to rob shit. You know, she couldn't take it anymore, and then had this uh, this uh, equipment, and then started burning the fuck out of people and was psychotic and shit. So that was a little bit interesting. Um, but let's keep going. I said that uh, we're gonna get Brendan Fraser as uh, Killer Moth, Killer Moth or Firefly, one of the two. Uh, in Bat, Bat uh, Girl, and so we got a first look of uh, Bat Girl star Lisa or Leslie Grace in her Halloween costume. Now, this is just a goofy ass video she put up on Twitter. We'll look at, but um, 
Let's see. The pieces are finally starting to fall in place. HBO Max's Batgirl movie. Now, I thought this was a series. Okay, so this is a movie which will give Barbara Gordon uh, slash Batgirl her most prominent showcase in live action yet. The film will star uh, in the Heights alumni, Leslie Grace, and fans have been eager to see what she will bring to the iconic character as well as what her costume would look like on Sunday. Grace shared a video on social media of her cosplaying as Batman. So let's go ahead and pull up the other screen and let's dive into, uh, let's see what she did. When they ask for pictures of the Batgirl suit. Okay, she's putting on the makeup. She's getting ready. She got the purple on, and I think she put on, boom, a onesie. You got the eyes lighting up. So, you know, you can kind of envision what she'll look like with the cow. Now, the onesie is not the same. That's actually a good roundhouse if she pivoted her ground foot at the very bottom. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of excited to see. I thought this was a TV show because we've got stuff... Um, Star Girl, you know, we have Batwoman that in the second season they switched to their Batwoman was. So uh, I want to see what they do with Batgirl with this new Barbara Gordon. Last but not least, if you are a fucking Lego fan, which I know you are, everybody is, because they wouldn't have made this shit if you weren't, uh, we're getting finally this Batmobile in Lego form, the motherfucking Tumblr. Boom! From the Dark Knight series uh, from Chris Nolan. And uh, that nasty old Batman that used to walk around and do the voice. But uh, this actually dropped on the 29th of October. And this comes out tomorrow, November 1st. So if you're watching live, you can go ahead and go to Lego and uh, try to do your pre-orders. It says you can find these, damn, 76,240 Batman Batmobile Tumblr up for pre-order at Best Buy for $229.99. Um, there's also a listing at lego.com, but remember they go live on November 1st. So I go ahead and put that pre-order in now, but there's a 76,204 piece Batman Batmobile Tumblr features an open roof and control panel, a stand, a Christian Bale Batman, a Heath Le uh, Leather Ledger uh, Joker minifigure. It measured over six inches high, 17 inches long, nine inches wide uh, when completed and combines with other Lego DC Batman sets. So again, this Tumblr was from the 2008 version of the Batman. Uh, when we saw this shit, everybody was freaking. It was driving through fucking tunnels, running over cop cars. You had a bike in the middle. There's just so much shit that this blew my mind with this tumbler and here's this lego so if you again if you like legos you like to put models up around your house you don't have dogs or kids that are gonna fuck them up uh go ahead and, and put it in. even if you do it's it's a good lego to get into uh let's see soul says kind of off topic but i'm so excited for star war uh lego star wars the skywalker saga dude bringing and it's not even like a conclusion to the star skywalker saga because there's just so much lore but lego Jesus Christ, dude. I've got all the games. I've got a couple kits. Uh, and the models the models are expensive. And the games, though, just dive into the games. Play the series. They're all fun. No matter what it is, Lego. Lego is amazing. Lego Indiana Jones. Lego uh, Marvel Superhero. Lego DC. Lego Star Wars. Fucking amazing shit. And I'm glad you chimed in on that, Soul, because I do love the Lego series for Star Wars. Um, and let's see. That wraps it up for the news. So let's see where we at. We are 54 minutes in. Let's take our last bit of break and we'll come right back after this pause for the cause and we'll cover segment three, which is anime and manga of the month because I have two new ones for you. And I'm, I really feel like you guys will enjoy these. So let's take a pause for the cause. And we'll be right back with episode 288 of The Elijah Bailey Show. Welcome back. I couldn't keep you waiting for long. Thank you for joining. I, my mom's in the in the show. She's watching. She wants to know about some comics on film. So 
Shout out to you. Thanks for joining, Mom. Uh, and then let's go ahead and go into segment three, anime and manga of the month. Now, did I I don't even think I pulled this. We're going to have to go ahead and stop. Uh, and if you guys go ahead and drop in chat what these uh, what some of this music's from, if I don't drop it. And again, this is from Rifty Beats. If you know what the song is from, what video game, what anime, go ahead and drop it in. There might be a little gift for you. But let's go to anime of the month. Now, last month we had some titles that I was really, really enjoying. Um, Dirty Pair, again, is one of my favorite. It, it's just something that you couldn't find too many places. And when you did see it, it was just iconic. It made me kind of feel like Q, but also Outlaw Star and Trigun because it was like this buddy cop type show that just followed, uh, followed these two women trying to do the best job they can. They kind of get screwed every single time just you know, just because the, the job is just unforgiving. It's unrelentless. So uh, we're going to pull up this trailer for the anime of the month this month. And if you watch the my other podcast, a little bit of anime, you've heard about this. Me and Monica talk about this. I think Monica's currently watching this right now. Um, this is fucking and we're going to turn the volume off because I know a crunchy roll toy. All that shit's about to hit me. But here we go. The anime of the month uh, is based Pro, kind of like off a video game. It's a uh, it's my next life as a villain. This all roads or all routes lead to doom. And then there is a season two. It's all routes lead to doom X. But uh, our main character is, is uh, wealthy Aranus Katrina Kleiss, and uh, she is hit in the head with a rock and recovers the memory of her past life as a child. It turns out the world she lives in is the world of a video game fortune uh, fortune lover uh, and. Otome game uh, she was obsessed with in her past, but she's been cast as a villainous character who tries to foil the protagonist's romances. The best ending of the game for her is exile, and the worst is death. She'll have to find a way to avoid triggering the flags of doom and make her happy future. The misunderstanding based screwball love comedy now begins. This is 24 episodes, like I said, 12 episodes per season. There's two seasons out. You can find this on Crunchyroll and VRV. But to if you died in the real life in the real world and got transported to your favorite video game and you knew that you were a villain and shit wasn't going to work out for you, you'd be doing the same thing. They did this in the manga where it was Yamcha, uh, the isekai with a, a real-life character dying, getting transported into Yamcha's body, and then living the best life as Yamcha because he didn't want to die and be you know, a piece of shit. But again, this is on Crunchyroll VRV. You can watch all the episodes now. Both seasons are already out, very sweet and very compact, and it's very fun. Um, I never want any gifts. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you got two kids. They're the real gift. And let's go to manga of the month. I've been talking to to Richard about this one for the last couple of days because I started reading it and I hopped off of it and I got back on it. I'm just I just need comedy. Sakamoto Days. The guy with the gray hair and the mustache is. Let me let me read you what it officially says before I break it down. Uh, this is written by Yuto Suzuki. Kill some time with former hitman. Taro Sakamoto. Taro Sakamoto used to be an unrivaled hitman, earning legendary status in the underworld. But one day, the unthinkable happens. Sakamoto fell in love. He started dating, retired, got married, and had a kid, growing overweight as a result, though now working as a humble convenience store owner, aka a clerk, uh, the world of Hitman still follow him. Sakamoto, along with Shin, an esper and employee at his small store, will protect his humble life and family or die trying. Now, this is, you know, John Wick, basically. But if John Wick got, uh, you know, he's fat, he's out of shape. He was he's real skinny. The first encounter, he's like five, four or five dudes, cuts the dude's head off, kills the other ones, boom, boom, boom. And it's like, oh, my God, all the villains feared him and every hitman revered him. And then he fell on. He goes into a convenience store, falls in love, and then he blows up to this big and he likes to eat noodles and shit. And But his life is very uh, humble, but he doesn't talk. And the only time that you hear anything is when the Esper Shin, who's standing right next to him, the blonde haired kid, listens into his mind because Shin almost breaks their cover telling people they're hitman or what he used to do. And he's like, if you tell him, I'll kill you. And he's like, oh, uh, we are friends from softball leagues and shit like that. So this is a comedy action 
uh, manga you guys should check out and read. There's not too many chapters out right now. Again, I'm early into the manga. I'm like in the first 10 chapters, uh, and I will catch up very quickly. But this is one for you guys to catch up on. So again, anime of the month is my new life as a villainous. Um, and then the manga of the month is Sakamoto Days. And that, my good dear people, is going to wrap up the show. That is it. Comics are done Let's go ahead and turn this music back on. I know Buck knows what it is, but he he over there tripping about not winning anything. Um, but you got your comic reviews. I hope that World War Hulk comes out in DC or Disney Plus, uh, Netflix, wherever the fuck it comes out at. I got to pick up this giant issue of the villains because that artwork is fucking phenomenal. And then Sakamoto Days. Check it out. Viz Media, $1.99 a month. And my new life as a villain is check that shit out because there's a lot of comedy there. But what happens when you have all the answers? We've seen this in a couple of isekai before overlord was probably like the first one that was like i run this world but from the opposition and you don't really have any powers she's not just gonna be like oh i am a bad guy and i can take on this eins all ghoul character and beat the shit out of people say like, oh i know this game but i am also like a regular girl just ruining people's lives and shit but there is a slice of life aspect to it this is one that you'll enjoy it's very funny um other than that, guys, thank you guys for joining. I love and appreciate everybody that jumped in. Chat was chat was nice today. We got we got to talk a little bit more chat, but it is Halloween. Yeah, boy, bikey. We're gonna go bikey the black Mikey. I, I'm here. We about to go. Uh, I, my knees fucked up, so we're not gonna get them fucking roundhouse kicks. Maybe a hook kick. But I got three dogs with me. I got a, a lead pipe. I got a billy club. I actually do got a billy club. Actually, you know what? I don't think I've shown you that. I'll be right back. When you, you fight in the streets, you get... Hey, right, warriors. And this is, this is, this isn't like for, this isn't a prop. This was a cosplay. This was some shit that I found when I was a kid, long time ago in the streets. And this has served me well. I've never, I got baseball bats, I got swords, all that shit. But this Billy Club right here, this, this works. A lot of people are like, damn, Billy Club, what the fuck? Like, yeah, Billy Club? Yeah, that's some real shit. Like, y'all is... I saw a man hit a woman, which is bullshit anyway. He hit her with his fist like this. I said the the best he did was warm up her ear. And if she had a Billy Club, things would have been a little bit different. He says, see you later, Mr. Bailey. See you later. Uh, see you guys. Thank you guys for joining in. Thank you for jumping into the stream, talking about video games, hanging out. Uh, I will be back with a new episode next Sunday. I got to get the Mikey hair back. I'm sitting here just slicking it back um wednesday 6 p.m there is no little bit of anime this week we're going to be watching either killing bites or we're going to drop jump back into kabinari because i'm i'm on this this horror kick now i've watched the evil dead twice uh we're in the evil dead 2 american horror stories on the last episode that we met like the perfect future it's all aliens type shit i'm just really into good horror bad horror any horror and anime horror so wednesday i think kabinari the iron fortress we might watch if not then killing bites killing bites th th she's fucking up people there's a lot of blood and guts so either one is going to be great um and then join us uh, thursday jstone 812 for the dragon ball super talk and then saturday morning four uh and these are the official times i will stream in between here but you have four days i'm dedicated to sunday 4 30 wednesday 6 p.m thursday 7 p.m and saturday morning 7 30 a.m thank you guys so much i'm elijah 5000 and all i can say is uh, have a happy halloween uh don't scream and i'll catch your ass in the next broadcast make sure to follow like subscribe if you're watching on youtube watch the videos all the way through and add put the comment at the bottom let me chit chat with you from there find the discord the discord's on the twitch page the facebook page blackonstudios.com all the fucking podcasts i've ever been on and some great ass podcasts coming out of oklahoma are there for you uh i know that there's some there's one that's coming up that i'm excited because it's got people out in the wilderness eating peaches dirty raw ass peaches and shit no condoms no nothing just taking them off the off the vine and, ah, getting whatever they got it's all up in the mouth but blackstudios.com 
Apple Podcasts, Podbeam, Spotify, anywhere that you listen to podcasts, you can find this podcast there. Uh, again, PodCoin pays you to listen to your favorite podcast, so go ahead and utilize that. Jump in, come to the chats that we do here. Um, you know, jump into the streams. I'm about to be an esports street fighter and Dragon Ball fighter uh competitor i'm not gonna say champion yet but competitor because these boys have motivated something in me but if you guys want to see some edf gameplay fist of north star whatever let me know twitter the handle is right under my boy mikey's feet just to the left of me or the right of me whichever way you're watching but again i'm elijah 5000 i'll catch your ass in the next podcast i'm out see you folks love you peace